We begin by praising Allah, we praise Him, we seek His help and we ask for His forgiveness. And we seek refuge with Allah from the evil of ourselves and from the evil consequence of our evil actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, there is none to misguide. And whomsoever Allah leaves to go astray, there is none to guide. And I testify that Allah alone is worthy of worship and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the servant of Allah and his final messenger. Now, let me introduce myself, my background. Um, I was born in Tanzania, in Dar es Salaam. My father at the time was a colonial administrator in the now uh, defunct British Empire. Um, an empire that stretched once upon a time, wasn't that long ago, uh, over one third of the Earth's surface. Now the only thing left is uh, some islands in the Falklands. That's all that's left of it. How things change. How the mighty have fallen. This is a lesson that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us to in the Quran. To travel the earth and see the consequence. See what happened to people who came before you. Who were mightier in power and strength. And see what is left of them. So anyway, my father, a colonial administrator, that's where I was born in Tanzania, and they named me Anthony Vatswaf Gavin Green. Okay, I thought you were going to laugh. Vatswaf, Vatswaf is a Polish name, because my mother, in fact, is Polish. And being Polish, she is um, a Roman Catholic. And she always intended that me and my brother Duncan, Duncan Charles Alexander Green, would be raised up good Catholics and so uh, almost from the day that we were born we were enrolled in what is a very famous Roman Catholic boarding school. In fact it's a monastic boarding school that means it's also a monastery, a place where monks live and teach. And this place is called, this school is called Ampleforth College. It's in Yorkshire, which is in the north of England. So, um, when I was two years old, we left uh, Dar es Salaam. Uh, my brother was born in London. And uh, when we were, well, when he was like eight and I was like ten, we were sent off to boarding school. So from the age of ten, I was sent to uh, this, the preparatory school of Ampleforth College. Now, before... Before my mum, before they sent us off to Ampleforth College, I think my mum decided it was about time that she uh, taught me um, some of the prayers of the Catholics and some of the things that they say. She better prepare me a little bit for this uh, life in the monastery. And although she had married my father, who was an agnostic, which was not really allowed, she was only supposed to marry a Catholic, but she went ahead and married my dad anyway, and uh, she always considered herself as a sort of, not a very good Catholic, but she was going to make up for it by sending me and my brother to the school. And I remember one night she taught me a prayer. A prayer that is used by Catholics quite often. It's one of the frequently used prayers when, when they have a rosary, which is a string of beads on which they count a series of prayers. The main prayer that is said is called the Hail Mary. It goes like this. It begins like this. Hail Mary, Mother of God, blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Now, it was the first bit that when I was a nine-year-old child, hearing my mother say, Hail Mary, Mother of God. I said to myself, how can God have a mother? God is supposed to be without beginning and without end. How could God have a mummy? And so I sat there thinking about this mother of God and I decided to myself that, well, if Mary was the mother of God, she must actually be a bigger God than God. Those were the first questions that arose in my mind. And as I went to school and as I began to think more and study more and research more, I in fact had more and more questions. 
we used to have to go to confession. Now, confession, um, I, I think, as far as I remember, we had to do it a minimum of, I think it was once a year. It might have been more than that. Uh, but, at, you know, at least there was a certain amount of times, you, a minimum you had to do it. And the priest used to say, you have to confess all your sins. If you didn't confess all of them, then confession is no good and none of your sins will be forgiven. Now believe me, can you imagine? A school of boys aged what? 11, 10, all the way up to 19, 20. You think we're going to be confessing all our sins? And moreover, confessing our sins to the very people who are our house masters. In other words, they're in charge of us. Now I soon figure that this must be some huge spy conspiracy in order to keep control of people by going and confessing your sins. And I just and I and then I used to ask them why. Please tell me why do I have to go to you to confess my sins to you? Why can't I just ask God to forgive me? I mean, after all, after all, according to Jesus, according to the Bible, we would say the, the actual scriptures. Jesus is supposed to have said, the only prayer that you need is our Father. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. Right? That is the prayer. As for the other bit, they add sometimes in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, and the power and the glory. That's not there. They added that. If you actually look in the Gospel, that's the Our Father. Now, in the Our Father, you are asking God to forgive you your trespasses, your sins. So, how come I have to come and ask some priest? And you know what they said? They said to me, well, you can ask God if you want to, but you can't be sure that God's going to listen to you. <laughs> right? So, I had a real problem. You know, I had a real problem with this. And I had real problems with the doctrines of the church. I think one of the things that I also had a problem with, a very, very big problem, is the doctrine of incarnation. The idea that God became a man. Now, just to mention something about this. When I was... <coughs> excuse me. When I was... Uh, how old? 11 years old. My dad... Uh, took a job in Egypt. He became the uh, general manager of Cairo Barclays. He opened up Barclays Bank in Cairo. And that's for the next 10 years of my life. That's where I spent my holidays. So I'd be going to school in England and to Egypt for my holidays. Now, you see, Western society indoctrinates us with an equation. The equation tells us wealth equals happiness. Wealth equals happiness. If you want to be happy, if you want to enjoy your life, you need money. Because when you have money, you can buy our nice cars and have our nice TV sets and watch those movies and go on holiday and buy all these things that you so desperately need to fill your lives with, to make your lives happy. This is, what the pro this is what they're telling us the whole time. Yet, in reality, that's not the case at all. And you see, my eyes were being opened up to this. And I began to ask myself as I went back to school, and I have to say I really did not like school at all. I particularly didn't like boarding school. I just couldn't understand why I was in this monastery on the edge of the Yorkshire Moors, miles and miles away from anything and anybody. And here I was in this place. Why? What was it all for? I began to ask myself.